thing just let go. All right, guys, we made it back from Bristol yesterday. Got the sidekick up on the lift here, and we were just going through this thing, getting her all fixed up after the burnout. Went ahead and ran over to the tire store, got a couple new tires for the rear, got those guys changed out. The old ones are right there. This one was just absolutely shredded. So close to blowing that guy, but luckily it held up. And we'll show you guys a damage report on all the stuff in the engine bay here in a minute. As you guys saw, the radiator was completely destroyed on this thing. Even the bottom of it blew out as well. This is the factory um, auto like trans cooler deal right here. That blew out of it as well. Both top and bottom tanks completely destroyed. So we're gonna have to track down a new radiator for this thing. We're gonna find one that fits in there that's aluminum. Give it a nice little upgraded radiator. And uh, once we get a new radiator, New tires already on there and theoretically it'd be good to go again we do need to hook up the rear brakes make those work again like a normal car would have and we are going to be redoing the exhaust not going to have the up pipe on it forever we want it to go down and out and uh, just make this thing an overall streetable fun car we can take anywhere so got some work to do on the sidekick right now Wyatt's working on some things for the ls because we left off on the uh, LS here getting the bottom end assembled. We were waiting on head studs before we could throw the heads on. We have those in. We've just been so busy leading up to the trip that we held off on that. But since we got those in, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this together today as well. And if you look right over here, I'm working on getting the rear bumper back onto the MR2 right before we left. I redid this parachute mount since the old one was about to fall apart on us. And I just got some finishing touches done on this guy, got it repainted, got these end caps welded onto these tubes, got our tow hooks welded on there so we can strap this thing back down and it is all bolted up, ready to go. I did see some concerns in the comments about how I mounted it, saying I should have added more um, internal structure there with more added tubing for less points of failure. But guys, I promise you this thing is going to be way more stout and secure than the old one was, and I have zero worries about this thing coming apart. The parachute mount does see quite a bit of stress when the parachute is opened, but I think most of the main stress is caused from when we're just strapping this thing down in the trailer, sucking these tow hooks down tight, and that, happening over and over again every time we would take the car out is what fatigued the old one to get to the point to cracking so i'll be able to keep an eye on this and i'm very confident that this will be you know good to go for years to come so i did see a comment they're like you know he made it go from sketch to less sketch but i don't really agree with that this will be solid and ready to go for a while and if it does crack later on then you can say i told you so but boys i jumped on this thing she's on there good and we're gonna be able to slow down, no problem with that guy. So right now I'm working on getting the bumper on, like I said, um, these are the vents I was talking about that we will be bolting on right there. We just gotta drill our holes and cut these guys out. So these will let any air escape that gets trapped up in our rear bumper to reduce any little bit of drag that that might be causing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we can get the rear bumper back on this thing and the MR2 will be all good to go and uh, make some passes again. And yes, I know this bumper is very dirty and beat up. You can even see right here where the back of it scraped on that massive wheelie. I like to leave these battle scars just to remind us of what not to do. All right, guys, check it out. Got those vents on the rear bumper, ready to stick this guy back onto the MR2. I went ahead and pulled this thing out, got it all power washed off. Bumper was pretty dirty. Still could use a nice cut and buff on this paint job. Overall, the MR2 could just really use a wrap. Its paint is not in the best condition. But anyways, we'll get that bumper on here in a second. Right now, Wyatt has been working on getting the windage tray and the pickup on our LS here. And it looks like we're just about ready to throw the oil pan on. Yeah, gonna throw the front and covers on it real quick. 
and then uh, oil pan will go on for the final time, flip it over, put the heads on it, be good to go. Yep, bolt up that trans, clutch, flywheel, all that good stuff. Yeah, throw it in the car. Yes, sir. They're almost all running again. If the minivan didn't blow up. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Don't all right. Say that. All right. I'm Don't just going to, I'm going to stop talking right now, guys. <laughs> but yeah, we got the oil pan right here. Brand new oil pan gasket. Good to go. Slap that guy on. And like you said, we'll flip her over, get the heads on. And our LS is almost complete. So I just about have the rear bumper back on. The vents came out awesome. And while I'm at it, if you notice, I actually have some different tail lights on this thing right now. A while back, Bob MR2 on Instagram, Bob Fam sent me a pair of JDM taillights and I was going to originally put them on the red MR2, but since we ended up getting rid of that thing, they were just laying around and I was actually talking to him recently and he's like, you know what? You should just throw those things on this one. And uh, you know, while we have the back end apart here, I went ahead and did that. There were a couple modifications I had to do to get these on there. I had to trim a little bit on this center plastic piece right here. And then I had to swap over all of the bulbs and the harnesses from the existing taillights into these guys. So I got all that swapped over. I'm gonna go ahead and get both of the new tail lights in there, get it all bolted back up, and she will be good to go. That is gonna look so freaking sweet when it's all done. I'm really liking those vents. So before we can get the heads onto the LS, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the springs and retainers on these guys so we can rev it out a little harder. Yep. Well, I went ahead and already got one of those guys knocked out, and uh, we are moving on to the second one right here. Pretty straightforward process. A lot more room than a Honda head. You just uh, you know use your little tool right here, tighten those guys down, Swap them all out. You guys know the deal? Yeah, pretty simple, straightforward. You get them done and uh, yeah, like you said, be able to rev this thing a lot higher, so. Without it, hopefully coming apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, valve floating, kissing a valve, some dumb thing. But uh, yeah, once that's done, we can put the heads on it and then uh, it's pretty much ready to go. Yep, then uh, it's on to flywheel clutch and bolting up that trans. Yeah, and then uh, stuffing it in that beat up shell of a car. <laughs> <laughs> the 240 is a little rough. Yep. But why it's gonna go is. ahead and Get this one knocked out, and we'll be good for final assembly. Wyatt really is the full package over here. Fabricator, engine builder, CNC shop, all in one. Get your heads resurfaced professionally. Pro CNC shop right here, baby. <laughs> Good Ready to go. To go. Yep. All the new valve springs and retainers are in. Heads professionally resurfaced, as you just saw. What grid is that? That is 420. 420. Oh, that's <laughs> that's how you know it's gonna be primo, <laughs> dude. So, so heads are ready to go on. Yep. Just gotta power wash them off real quick. Make sure all the traps out of there, and uh, be good to go. two pulled out here let her get a little sun just got the rear bumper back on everything is done ready to go got the new tail lights in and boys this thing looks so good from the back check that out those jdm tail lights look freaking awesome i do also have the centerpiece that goes along with the jdm tail lights but i figured in case we ever redo the exhaust or something later on i didn't want to cut into that nice piece just yet and you can get by with the uh, non-JDM centerpiece just fine with uh, trimming those sides out like that, but that looks so sick, boys. I'm glad I did that. Looks awesome. Can't wait to get her back to the track. So we got the sidekick lower back down here, went ahead and got the radiator pulled out of this thing, and that thing is completely toasted, dude. Look at this bottom tank. Completely twisted up. At the event, I that didn't got real it, hot. I didn't realize it blew the bottom out of it too, man. Yeah. It came apart. Freaking blew her bottom out that radiator along with the top piece as well See, it had the balloon the top of this thing yeah dude it just look how tweaked it got destroyed. thing is messed up it had the gaskets dangling off of it too they're right here these are the gaskets for both tanks on the top and bottom those guys were dangling underneath the car and we're like what the heck are those but yeah that radiator 
is completely done. So other than that, that was the only major damage to the sidekick along with the tires that we already got fixed. I mean, take a look at that wastegate, probably change it out as you guys saw. We also have a very weak spring in that eBay wastegate, so that didn't help us at all. If we had a stronger spring, that may have solved that valve being stuck open issue. But regardless, you need to take a look at that. We're probably going to do hard copper lines right here because our upper line to the gate completely melted. And yeah, other than that though, get a new radiator in this thing and get the rear brakes working and the sidekick will be all good to go again. And like I said, at some point we are going to be redoing the exhaust. We want it to go down and out, but you know, for right now, we're gonna roll with it how it is. Mainly just wanna get it fixed up so we can go drive it around and tow our jet skis to the lake. So guys, fast forward two hours, we actually were able to make the existing radiator we had over here work on the sidekick here. We got her all back together, got the rear brakes hooked back up. So she should be exactly how it was before we left to Bristol for the burnouts. But now she has an upgraded aluminum radiator. This is the one that uh, Mike brought us and it was a little too tall and I really did not think we would be able to make this thing work. But after quite a bit of modification, we had to cut some stuff down there to get it to sit low enough. We got it to fit into place here. And you know, there's a couple ghetto things still going on. We need some legit spacers right here, but we were able to get it to bolt up into the factory location. It sits nice and low. We got the fan back on there, radiator lines hooked back up. So now we just got to fill this thing up and uh, she's good to go again, boys. <laughs> Perfect. Good to go. <laughs> on there pretty good yeah the almost it rides a little nose forward but not bad dude the boat is bigger than the sidekick 100 percent. i don't know how this would do down the highway it might be a little sketch in the rain like trying <laughs> to slow down but i mean just some trips back and forth to the lake i don't think it should be an issue i say we feel it down the road though and like get on the brakes and just make sure it feels good because i don't know what sidekicks are rated to tow but this is probably about maxed out <laughs> probably so
We tried to take the jet boat out with the sidekick here and we cooked the transmission. We were <laughs> bringing it back here to uh, unhook it and I went to go put it back into drive into first gear and nothing. It has literally three neutrals right now. Um, the first drive went decent. We got up to like 60 miles an hour with the boat. We noticed the trans was slipping a little more than it probably should. It does have a 5500 stall converter in this thing so you do have to get it pretty revved up for it to start to hook up. So we didn't think it was anything too crazy. We're like, maybe the boat's just a little heavy for it with this high, with such a high stall converter. We're like, let's just drop off the jet boat and go drive it around, make sure everything's good. And uh, as we were unloading the jet boat here, we found out that the transmission is in fact not good. It is bad. <laughs> so uh, this is actually just a stock transmission that we got in there last minute for the burnout contest. We have yet to put the built trans in this thing. So it does suck. The burnout definitely could have played a factor in this because I'm sure that thing was very hot. The ATF that was in the trans was already looking pretty cooked, so who knows? But all I can say right now is she done. Looks like we have to put the jet boat in by hand because yeah, I can't drive this thing forward now. Man, big sad. I was gonna take this thing to a meet tonight. I know we were gonna go to its <laughs> first car meet, and she now said she no has more. Three neutrals, and we weren't even drag racing it, just trying to four neutrals. Yeah, four neutrals. Acting like a 4L60E. There's, there's the actual fourth <laughs> neutral as well. Yep. But dude, reverse is solid. Yeah, reverse is <laughs> great. We got. Well, boys, that is not how I wanted today's video to end, but unfortunately, the transmission is cooked in the sidekick here. But like I said, we have a built one being put together right now, so we'll just swap that guy in once it gets here, and we should be all good to go. Um, I was talking to Mike, and I guess uh, his training guy over there says that there is a chance that we could have overheated this thing since it has such a high stall converter in it, especially with towing that constant slippage up until it gets to that required RPM to lock up could definitely overheat the fluid. I mean, we do have a really good trans cooler on there and we did not take it very far. So I'm not sure if that is what happened because it was slipping like right away. So, you know, who knows? This transmission though was just a quick one to get thrown in there for the event. It did what it needed to do. So now it's time for us to get the other one in there. And the other one will have a manual valve body set up. We're gonna try to set it all up so we can set up a trans brake and all that good stuff and actually take this thing drag racing in the future, which I think would be awesome to see this thing launch on the drag strip, try to pull the front tires off the ground. Uh, but we got a lot of other things that we want to do with the sidekick here. But other than that, everything else is uh, fixed up and ready to go. So we'll get to that later. Unfortunately, we were showing some stuff that we were getting done with the LS today as well. And we were just about to get the heads on and finish this video off with having the engine here fully assembled, ready to go. We got the oil pan and all the other gaskets on there that we needed, but it turns out we ordered the wrong head stud. So this is a pre 04 LS and I guess the LS is after 04 have a different style head stud. So we got the wrong ones. They will be here tomorrow. And then this will be all together and ready to go. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Just a kind of quick update with where we have been after the trip. The MR2, as you saw, is all back together. Hopefully we will be bringing that to the track here soon. FL2K is coming up as well. And in case you're wondering, we will be there with the orange NSX. I got it signed up for the roll races. So uh, yeah, that is going to do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you later.